We are getting close to the end of our study on the subject of sin. Last week, we read the frightening words of Jesus saying that many will say, Lord, Lord, on the day of judgment, but will be rejected by him. The Bible says that many people who claim to be Christians will be rejected on judgment day. I hope that after having studied about sin, you will understand why these people were rejected. These people might have looked righteous outwardly, but their hearts were never changed. These people never turned from their selfishness. They never truly walked in the love of God. That is the problem with religion. You can be religious and do all the right things, and yet not be truly righteous in God's eyes. This is why it is important that we do not see sin as being physical actions only. Let us leave this subject and move on a little to one last subject that relates to sin. The Bible teaches us that our world was a perfect place when God created it. All the wrongs that we see in our world came into this world because of our sin. It is hard for us to understand how our actions have brought sickness and decay in this world, but the Bible goes much further than this. The Bible says that our sins even affected such things as weather, the strength and usefulness of our tools, and the productivity of the land we live on. Although we do not understand it, our sin has brought much more destruction on earth than we know. It is valuable for us to understand the consequences of sin. It will help us understand how evil and bad it is. Let me repeat an illustration I have already used. When a king is wicked, who suffers? Does the king suffer more, or do the people of his kingdom? Sin will affect us personally, but sin will affect others even more, and that is what makes sin so wicked. When a king is wicked, he may continue to live in health and luxury, but his wickedness can cause the misery of millions of people that live under his rule. When we see a wicked person like that live a prosperous life, we may get angry with God and wonder where his justice is. The Bible instructs us about this. Psalm 37, verse 1 to 18. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. God has commanded us not to get upset when evil people succeed. We must remember what we learned a few weeks ago. Everyone's life is short. The wicked may live luxurious lives, but their life will end quickly, and they will be judged for what they have done. We should not envy the things that rich people have. 
We should trust in God and delight ourselves in Him because God is the one that brings joy and peace. The Bible says that our way of living will be vindicated in the end. We need patience. The wicked plot against the righteous and do all kinds of wicked things. But we are called to be still before the Lord. Remember to keep time in the right perspective. The righteous will live forever, but the wicked will receive eternal punishment for what they have done. We should be content to have the blessing of God in our life, even if we face many troubles. We will one day spend eternity with God. Let us look at one more example before we move on with our subject. When a father of a family is a drunkard, it is not the father that suffers the most, but the children and his wife. Because of the father's sins, there is great unrest and abuse in the home, and even in the community where they live. The abuse and pain that the children experience will affect their lives even when they leave their home, and often they will replay the same abuse in their new home. Because the father has been given responsibility over his family, his character will greatly affect everyone in his family. The sins of the father will in some way affect the life of his children and his grandchildren for generations to come. In this way, we must understand that sin has a deep impact on society for generations. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 6 you shall not make for yourselves an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. When God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, He said that those who bow down to idols will bring about punishment on their children, even to the third and fourth generation. On the other hand, God is willing to show love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Sin and righteousness have a long-lasting effect. Our sin can affect people born even after we die. When God says that the children will be punished for the sins of their parents, He is talking about the punishment that comes as a consequence of sin. An alcoholic parent can bring about generations of alcoholics. The Bible is clear, however, that we will not be punished for the sin of our parents. We may suffer consequences from their sin, but when God punishes us, it will be for the sins we commit ourselves. This is clear in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 1 to 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel, for everyone belongs to me the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look for the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relations with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone but returns what he looks but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing to the naked. He does not lend for them at interest or take a profit from them. He withholds his hand from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties. He follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws. That man is righteous. He will surely live declares the Sovereign Lord. But suppose he has a violent son, who sheds blood or does any of these other things, though the father has done none of them. He eats at the mountain shrines, he defiles his neighbor's wife, he oppresses the poor and needy, he commits robbery, he does not return what he took in pledge, he looks to the idols, 
He does detestable things. He lends at interest and takes a profit. Will such a man live? He will not. Because he has done all these detestable things, he is to be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. But suppose this son has a son who sees all the sins his father commits. And though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look at the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife. He does not oppress anyone or require a pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He withholds his hand from mistreating the poor and takes no interest or profit from them. He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He will not die for his father's sins. He will surely live. But his father will die for his own sin, because he practiced exhortion, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong among his people. Our sins bring about far more pain and suffering to this world than we understand. Let us continue on with our study about the consequence of sins by looking at the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. Let us remember what happened to Adam and Eve. After Adam and Eve sinned, the whole world was changed. Their sin was the cause of change for creation itself, including the ground and the behavior of animals. God is clear that the ground was cursed because of the sin of Adam and Eve. From that time on, the ground would no longer produce abundance, and it would also start to produce thorns and thistles. Although we may not understand why our sin affects the ground in this way, the Bible is clear that it does. There are a few other changes that sin made to this world. Sin brought about pain and childbearing. Sin also changed the relationship between Adam and Eve. Because of sin, Adam would rule over Eve, and she would desire him. Adam and Eve were to rule over the earth, but Adam was never to rule over Eve. They were to work together. Neither of them should have had an unhealthy desire for one another. Because of sin, the main relationship that was to build a family and be the foundation of society was broken. We can confidently say that all of these things were not a punishment for sin, but a consequence for them. We will not be punished for our sins until we face Judgment Day. All these curses are natural consequences of sin, and they are not taken away even when we put our faith in Christ. We will never be free from them until God redeems us from this world and gives us a new body. Let us look at Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, there is a whole chapter focused on the consequences of disobeying God. It is amazing how far-reaching our sin is. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land He is giving you. The Lord will establish you as His holy people, as He promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him, Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity, and the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground. In the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, 
to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. The laws that God has given are all given for a good reason. They are not randomly made up. Each law is given to protect us or teach us. Let's remember that Jesus himself said that the foundation behind all these laws is love. If you love God and your neighbor, you will fulfill the law of God. Once more, let us make sure that we understand that there are natural consequences of breaking a law, and there are punishments for breaking them as well. A person that drinks while driving may get into an accident and become handicapped. The consequence of his sin might change the rest of his life and the life of others, and yet he has not been punished for breaking the law yet. The Bible says that those who obey the law of God bring a general blessing over themselves, wherever they go. Verse 4 says that their children will be blessed, as well as their fields and their livestock. Verse 5 says that even the tools they use will be blessed. I believe that there is a real tangible spiritual blessing in all of these things when we follow Jesus. There is a very logical way to understand this as well. God has commanded us both in the Old Testament and the New Testament not to be lazy. God also says that those who do their work half-heartedly are brothers to those who destroy. These commands are given to us for our benefit, and we can easily see how following them or not following them can drastically change our life. Imagine, if you will, two farmers. One farmer works hard, and everything he does, he does to the best of his ability. Because this farmer is not lazy, he fixes the buildings, he mends the fences, he works his fields, and he even takes time to do new irrigation projects on his land. It is not hard to see how following God's law brought blessing to him, his livestock, his land, and his family. The other farmer is lazy and spends his time in the local bar. This farmer's barn and house are becoming more and more broken. His fences are down so that the cows get out, and his land does not produce well. Because he does not take care of his equipment, his tractor breaks down constantly, and therefore his fields rarely yield a good crop. There is a natural curse that happens when we choose to ignore the law of God. A long time ago, our nation honored God's word, and many biblical values were commonly taught in the homes. Companies would do their best to give their customers the best equipment that they could, so that it would last long. Because the companies lovingly served their customers and did not only think about money, their products were well designed and lasted. In our day, companies are corrupt. They do not care about the individual, but are interested in money. Many things are made to break after a certain amount of time and are designed to need updates so that the customer is constantly buying more. One last story before we move on. Many years ago, a major mountain road was paved in Nepal. Once this road was paved, a trip that took six hours could be done in half the time. Because the contractor and every worker that paved the road were corrupt, the nicely paved road was full of potholes within one year's time and became almost worse than what it was before the work was done. The politicians took a bunch of the money set aside by the government to build the road. The contractors used half the amount of cement and gravel required for a good foundation, and the workers stole sand, tools, and cement while working. As a result of sin, the whole region suffered greatly. Deuteronomy says that if we follow God's law, we will defeat our enemies, and verse 7 says that our enemies will fear us. 
Your obedience will bring about an abundant blessing to your land, and God will make you the head of other nations, not the tail. When we look at the Old Testament, we will find that these words are true. Every time Israel sinned, God would take away his protection, and they would be invaded by foreigners. When they obeyed God, they would once more find freedom. This is not so much a curse as a natural consequence of sin. God cannot protect and bless criminals and murderers, or he would be evil. There is one more thing that our sin affects. Our sin will affect even the weather of our land. Verse 12 says that God will send rain at the right time if we are careful to follow His commands. From verse 15 onward, God provides a list of curses that will be on those who do not follow His commands. Those who do not follow God will be cursed in whatever they do. Their descendants will be cursed, and the work of their hands will be cursed. Their land and their animals will be cursed, and they will never find safety and security. Let us read a few of the verses together. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20 to 24. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand to, until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking Him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until He has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. Deuteronomy 28 verse 28 to 29. The Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. At midday you will grope around like a blind person in the dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day you will be oppressed and robbed, with no one to rescue you. Verse 30-32 to 32, You will be pledged to be married to a woman, but another will take her and rape her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even begin to enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcibly taken from you and will not be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies, and no one will rescue them. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation, and you will wear out your eyes watching for them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. Verse 43 and 44. The foreigners who reside among you will rise above you higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. They will lend to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head, but you will be the tail. I hope that you are understanding how much pain and suffering our sin brings to our world and our country. We must at least try to understand how we play a part and many problems this world is facing, so that we may hate sin as much as God does. One thing that the Bible says will happen if we do not follow God is that we will be confused and even become mad. People that do not follow God lose their reason for living and end up groping around being unsuccessful and oppressed. These verses also tell us that our sin will affect our health and finally, that we will be persecuted by our enemies. Those who choose to ignore God's laws will be abused. Others will steal their wives, their farms, and even take their children into other nations. All these evil things that happen to us are because of the sin we commit. If your nation and your people are abused in this way, it is because of sin. I hope that our study about sin has helped you understand your personal guilt and encouraged you to turn to God in repentance. I hope that as we have studied this subject, you have come to understand how amazing God's grace and love is for us. It is my prayer that God would continue to teach us His perspective on sin.
May God bless you and your family.